Good morning everybody, this is Ed Wilson, the Microsoft Scripting Guy, and today I want to continue my discussion about troubleshooting WinRM. So yesterday I talked a little bit about using the, um, the event trace logs to look at issues perhaps you know related to uh, WinRM. So today I want to talk about you know some of the things that I might look at if um, you know, if there is there's issues. So WinRM, you know, by the way, is Windows Remote Management, and it's used by Windows PowerShell whenever I want to connect to a, um, a remote system to run a command or something like that. It's also used by the uh, the sim, sim commandlets like you know, Git sim instance, for instance, that allows me to run uh, WMI in a firewall friendly manner to uh, retrieve information from you know, others Windows systems as well as you know, from uh, Linux systems and uh, routers and storage devices and all of that. You know, the, the SIM, the uh, common information model, uh, can be used to connect to uh, lots of different types of things. The, the, I say Windows, WinRM is firewall friendly. It really only, you know, uses like a single port, although it listens on another one. You know, but, you know, so there's like, you know, two ports that I need to see to uh, make sure that they're working. So I've got Windows PowerShell open with an administrator prompt, and uh, I'm going to run a few commands that are going to allow me to to troubleshoot and see what's going on, you know, with WinRM. So, for instance, there is the uh, WinRM uh, ID command, and when I run this command. Uh, is going to go off and it's going to give me back uh, information about WinRM. Now if I look at this, um, it says WizMan fault. Whenever you see the word fault, uh, that's always a bad thing. It says the client can't connect to the des destination. Well, dude, the destination is my local machine. So if it can't find my local machine, I'm in trouble. And then notice there's an error number. And this error number is like, yeah, dude, it's a great big number. So, um, so when I look this up, that's like a path not found uh, type of error message, actually. So this is telling me that when RM can't find uh, my local machine in order to be able to even give me uh, an ID. So that's a bad thing. Now, if it was connecting properly and if it was reporting properly, then I would see like the protocol version, vendor information, product version, uh, and some stuff like this. But I don't see this right now. So normally what I would do is, um, yeah, I would run run RM, um, quick config, uh, or actually I would just use uh, enable you know, PS remoting. But I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so the next thing that I want to do then, you know, if um, if I'm troubleshooting this to try to see what's going on, uh, that is to see like, uh, dude, like, uh, what's the status of uh, the WinRM service? So I can use uh, SC. Um, now, if I use SC, this is the command line tool that says uh, gives me service configuration information. So I have to specify SC.exe. Uh, SC is actually an alias within what is PowerShell for set content. And so if I don't specify SC.exe, then what is PowerShell is going to return uh, try to like set content, which is going to get like really squirrely. So now I do a query. Uh, and I'm looking for WinRM. And uh, when I do, uh, it comes back and um, it says uh, WinRM, uh, the type, uh, blah, 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 the state is stopped. So WinRM isn't running. Uh, so obviously that's like an issue. Um, the next thing that I would check um, after I checked my service, now, of course, I can also use uh, Git Service. Um, um, and when RM, well, got to spell it right. Um, and this comes back and lets me know it stopped too. So, yeah, this is actually what I would be using is get uh, get service. I wouldn't necessarily be messing around with SC. Um, so the next thing that I want to do then is I need to do like a net stat. So, because um, uh, remember I mentioned that there were the ports. Well, I want to check those ports. 
um, TCP uh, and uh, so like dude who's listening to what so I come over here and uh, I got 135, you know, 445, and then I've got like 49, 408, 409, 10, 11, 12, you know, hike. Um, but dude, uh, what's missing here? Well, 59.85 and 47.001, that's what I would be looking for here. And they're not there. So obviously, you know, this dude's not like, you know, listening to the right ports. The service hasn't started. So obviously, I've got a problem, right? Well, so what I'm going to do then is I've meant, I mentioned that I would use enable PS remoting. It doesn't hurt if I run this command uh, several times, actually. Um, now, if I just press uh, enable PS remoting, then it's going to come back and it's going to go, prompt, 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 do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Yeah, 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 blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So I use the force, you know, um, and then I press enter, and then this keeps from getting all of the prompts. But, dude, so uh, it updated to re receive requests, a service started, but quick config is coming up here and whining. And uh, if I look at this, uh, it says, you know, firewall exception isn't going to work because the network connection on this machine is set to public. And it's like, yo, dude, change the network configuration to either domain or private and then try again. So, bummer, bummer, bummer. So, I can set my um, my network connection by using the uh, the, the set connection, um, I, but uh, I don't want to do that. So, the other thing that I can do um, is I can say use the force, and then I can also just say, you know, skip the network profile check. And if I skip my network profile check, then it goes off and it will actually do my configuration for me. Uh, and uh, everything that it does, you know, it's going to make my firewall exceptions and all this other stuff. But you've got to know that you want to skip that profile check. Now, do you really want to do this if you're on a public connection? Well, maybe. You know, it depends on your firewall, uh, can, depends on the security that got in your system, you know, and all this other stuff. You know, in the past, we didn't give you the option. You know, now we did. So um, that's it. Uh, that's going over uh, using some of the tools and utilities uh, that I would do. So in summary, um, first thing I did is I used WinRM, uh, specified the ID, to check and see if uh, WinRM is even responding. Uh, if it is, if it isn't, you know, then the next thing I do is I check to see if the WinRM service is responding. And then if it is, if it isn't, whatever. Um, and then I used... Um, yeah, Nestat to check and see if the WinRM uh, service was listening to the appropriate ports or not. Again, if it was, if it wasn't. Uh, then finally, used uh, enable PS remoting to uh, re-enable it. I specified force to suppress the prompts because I've seen the prompts before. Uh, and I told it to skip my network profile check, but just to go ahead and enable PS remoting anyway. So that's it for um, troubleshooting uh, WinRM. Uh, this is Ed Wilson, the Microsoft scripting guy, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.